In this video, I want to try to really just set up a very, very basic way to grab and pick up slash hold items that are in the world. So what we're going to do to start this off is create a simple blueprint class, or actually better yet, let's go ahead and just start with the kind of base functionality behind it. So what I want to use is either controller when I click the, let's see, for right now I'll do it when I click the triggers. So that's just going to be a little bit easier for me in my situation where I'm at. So whenever I click the trigger of the left controller and it's connecting with some, let's say, a, uh, ah, what do you call it? An object that we want to be able to pick up, for example. I want to be able to pick that up, move it around until I click it again and I drop it. And same thing goes for the right controller. So if we look, let's go ahead and get our left motion controller real quick and I'll kind of roughly show you. We can look for things like grab or no, it's called grip. So here we have grip actor. So we can see the parameters here. It takes in what actor we're going to grip, the transform that we want to use. So any sort of offset, which we may or may not want. Offset is relative. Pretty much everything else we can basically ignore if we're just going to grip wherever we grab the object from. So if we wanted to use something like a think of onward when you go to grip your weapon, you're, it kind of snaps to a specific location that we will discuss later, but that's where you would use things like the, like some form of offset. So, and you would kind of adjust it based upon that. So we're going to use grip actor. There's also a grip component, which takes in obviously the component and grip object. You can see an array of gripped objects and so on and so on. You can also, as you can see here, grip object by interface, which my understanding of this is the only difference is it texts if the actor you're trying to pick up is inheriting from the grip interface. So let me go ahead and actually make the blueprint class real quick. What we're going to derive it from is a grippable actor, and we're going to use static meshes. So we're just going to use a grippable static mesh actor. And I'm going to name it BP Grip Test. Open that on up. And here we have the VR Grip interface. So here we have a bunch of settings that we can, you know, tinker around with. We can have our own scripting. So we could have one for, for example, here's one for guns. We can have, slide this over, a couple of different things. We even have like the virtual stock that you see inside of Onward and just a bunch of other basic settings. And for example, uh, tinkering with some of these settings was how I set it up so you could have a basic gun. So you have the right socket, well, the socket for, let's say you're right-handed, where your right hand would go in the pistol grip, the firearm would snap to that. And then same thing, when you would go to grip up at the front there on the handguard, it would kind of snap to it as well. So you can have specific, eh, what do you call it? Uh, as you can see actually right here, secondary slot and primary slot ranges. So you can have sockets that kind of are specific to where you can grip the actor or the object. So there's a lot, there is like a lot of stuff you can do with all this. And we'll, we will eventually dive into more, but for the time being, we just want a simple pickup and drop ability. So in this video, we're probably just going to get you the pickup. So how can we go about doing this? Well, what I ended up doing was I created a simple sphere component. So that sphere component was attached to our left and the right, or sorry, there's two sphere components. One was attached to the left controller, one was attached to the right. And depending on how they overlapped, if they were overlapping with an object, whenever we click the trigger to grab, we would go through, loop through the list, and pretty much grab whichever one we physically could and go basically from that route. So we're going to do the exact same thing again. So it's going to be a U property. And because this is a component, we're going to change this from edit defaults only to visible anywhere. I'm sorry, I'm slowly starting to switch over to uh, using that for components. Then we have to use a sphere component. So U sphere component, which I think it just included it for me. Yes, it did. So we're just going to forward declare outside of the class. So class U sphere component, like so. And then this is going to be our left controller uh, collision. Do the exact same thing, but 
change it to right controller collision. And then we have to go to the constructor, create default sub object, use sphere component, text left controller collision. Then we have to include components, sphere component.h. And now we can just simply copy and paste it and change it to right controller collision. And now we want to set up the parents. So we want these to be attached to the corresponding controllers. So what we're going to do for the left is obviously attached to the left hand. So we're going to do left controller collision, set up attachment to the left motion, yeah, left motion controller. And same exact thing, right controller collision, set up attachment to the right motion controller. And that'll allow these to track and follow along with our hands. So let me save it. Uh, we should be pretty much good to go there. So I'm going to go ahead and relaunch the project. Okay, slight issue that I forgot. Every time I try to launch it, it crashes. We're going to change left controller collision for the right controller collision to right controller collision, obviously, and then relaunch it. Okay, now let's go ahead and open up our character again. Go to the viewport, and as you can see, we now have these two collisions. So what we want to do with them, obviously, is shrink the size down. So we're going to take the scale, and let's drop it to... Actually, wait, no, not the scale, sorry. The sphere radius. Let's drop it down to something like... I'll try 10 for the left. And I want to uncheck hidden in game for both of them, just so I can see them. So let's go to the game. And here's the left. Um, that's a little on the big side, probably. So let's bump that down to about 8. And then we're going to set the other one that's large to 8 as well. Compile and save. And look. Yeah, I'd say that's okay. So we're going to leave it at that. Go ahead and save real quick. Not sure what it's trying to compile for shaders, but oh well. Okay, so we have that set up. Now we can also, it might be worth dropping it down a bit. So what I mean by that is taking the collision. I want to drop it by 10, let's do 5. Drop it by 5. And see if that puts it in a little better spot, because I want to grip kind of by the palm. So, oh yeah, that's right, we have jumping still set up. And that would probably really screw with me a bit. That's, that's set up to the left trigger, so that's neat. Anyways, so we have that set up there. Let's drop it just a little bit farther. Here we can actually see. Let's try to get the top um, just slightly above the top portion of the hand. So we'll go down by two more. And I think I'm going to leave it there. So that way I can kind of, I want to grip it by the palm. So that's where our collision is going to be. Now let's adjust our input components, create a function for it to call. And that's probably going to be it for this video. So let's go to input, action mappings. Uh, for jump, I want to go ahead and actually unbind. Actually, I want to unbind every single one of these. I'm going to get rid of fire and reset VR for now, or move Y. I'm going to actually remove the ones that I do not want to use. So I'm going to remove up and down every one except for my specific controllers. Same thing goes for move right. And everything else, I believe, can be the same. OK, let me save it. Now we want to set up our bindings. So let's add a new action mapping and let's call it grip left. Or to follow along with this, we're going to do grip underscore left. Now let's go to the HTC Vive or whichever one you have, and I'm going to set mine to the trigger. So five left trigger. Let's add another one. Grip underscore right. The work controllers again and Vive right trigger. Save this and set up the bindings. So I'm going to go ahead and copy our jump 
an action there. And rename these. So this was a grip underscore left. Change a character to whatever your class is called. Then grip right. I want to create name the functions grip left. And then grip right. And then we just got to create the functions. So where we have our move. Let's actually move all this up. Let's create the void grip left and void grip right. Create the implementations, which of course it put them down there. I want to move those over to the .cpp, like so. So we now have our grip left and our grip right. Like so. Now what I want to do is for now, I want to print out a log. Uh, actually, no. Because we want to be able to see it on the screen. We can't really see the log. So I want to do a... Uh, uh, what is it? Draw. Uh, add on screen. Maybe it's from the world. So get world. Add on... What is it? Let me look it up real quick. Okay, so it's off of the engine. So we're going to do, uh, what was it? G engine, add on screen debug message. See what the parameters are. Key, uh, negative one, two seconds, F color, red, and a left grip. We're going to copy this, move it down to our grip right. Change it to right grip, and I'm going to change the color to blue. So now that I have all that, let's compile and relaunch the project again. Okay. Just going to go ahead and just open back up the character. And let's see what actually happens. So let me try to grip with the left. It says left grip. Let me grab the right controller. It says right grip. So we have our gripping set up and good to go. We know it is calling the functions appropriately. So now the only thing left to do is we're going to do in the next video, obviously, is detect an object that we want to grip. And if we can grip it, what do we do? Obviously, we want to grip it. So anyways, that's going to be it for this video. If you like what I'm doing and you want to help support me, you can find a link to my Patreon down in the description below where you get early access to my videos as well as access to a Team Deathmatch series where we create Team Deathmatch using Unreal Engine with C++, covering a bunch of different features like weapon customization, custom spawning, and all that fun stuff. If you have any questions or anything like that, join my Discord down below and I'll try to help you out. So, I'll see you in the next video.